Alright, so in today's video we're going to take a look at two of what I would call the best power monitors money can buy. Uh, on the left we have the YZX Studio ZY1276, a very clear and easy to remember name. They have actually written it on the back though. And on the right we're looking at the Rui Dang UM25C, which uh, actually doesn't say the name on the, on the back. So let's uh, power them up and uh, I'm going to have a few categories and award points to either one. Right, so on the left we're going to have the score for the uh, YZX Studio monitor and on the right for the Rui Day. So let's quickly power them up. Alright. So first category, price. Right, what are we looking at? So the YZX Studio costs $45. Whereas the Rui Deng UM25C costs 17.5. So that is a huge difference. So this one is 2.5 times more expensive than this one, right? Which is why obviously this point goes to the Rui Deng. All right. Next up, we're going to look at the UI. And here already you can see some differences. So this point definitely goes to the uh, YZX Studio. The usage of the screen real estate is just way better than the than the Rui Deng, right? So you have huge fonts, right? As big as they can get for all the critical values. I think I might even ditch the watt hours in one display mode just to have even larger fonts, but this is fine, right? Whereas in the Rui Deng you have such small fonts for the milliamp hours and the watt hours, right? Uh, you do actually get a reading for ohms, for the calculated ohm ohmage equivalent ohms resistor but uh, yeah I don't know that's not that important and this one can also show it so yeah so yeah this clearly uh, goes to the uh, YZX studio both of them however have this retarded degrees Celsius reading I'm not even sure if you can change it to Fahrenheit but uh, this makes absolutely no sense first of all it's completely off like I can tell you now there's not a five degree difference between these two and none of them actually warm up, right? So, uh, this is very stupid. You can turn it off on the YZX. You can calibrate it, but I haven't and I won't. And I can't. So, I really don't give a shit about this value and I really would love to see it go away because it just simply clutters up the screen, right? I would just rather not have anything in that, uh, that area. On the UI front, the Rui Dang booting incredibly slowly. So let's try and get a roughly calibrated start. So boom. And you can see the Rui Dang takes forever to do this stupid animation, right? Which doesn't seem like much, but it does get pretty annoying pretty quickly. Also, if you're seeing the voltages, they are actually different. I did actually measure them and these do measure fine, right? So there's just a difference in the charge levels and the chips and whatever. So that's, that's fine. They're reading fine. Something else that is very nice, however, on the Rui Dang is the fact that you can actually rotate the interface. So this is actually very nice. Depending on how you plug it into the wall, you can actually get it to look perfectly, right? Whereas with the YZX Studio, you're stuck to this view, so you can, you'll have to read it back upside down and all that shit, right? So. This is very nice, and I very much appreciate this. This is very nice. It's a very nice feature. So let's rotate back. Uh, both of them actually have a screen off feature. So this is an actual mode on the Rui Dang. So let's see if we can get it. Yeah. So you can do measurements in the dark. Um, what else? That's pretty much all concerning the UI. So we're at 1.1 at the moment. Talking about the ease of use, however, the situation is again in favor of the Rui Deng because uh, it simply has four times as many buttons. So you can see the four buttons, two up top, two on the bottom. The YZX only has one button, which is just crazy. I have no idea why they wouldn't add at least a second one to go back and forth between menus because here, right, you go look at some stuff and then you can simply go back, right? Whereas here you switch to mode by mistake or something, you really need to go through absolutely all of the modes to get back, which is quite annoying. You do get used to it, but it is quite aggravating at times. Also, the Rui Dang has a, uses one of these buttons for a help feature, 
which shows you what each of the buttons do. Uh, this one resets, this one uh, goes between groups, and uh, this one just turns it off. All right, so very nice. Next up, we're gonna talk about accuracy, and from what I could see, everything was spot on, and I did cross-check them with my uh, homemade power monitor, and that also measured pretty much the same, so that's quite fine. The YZX does have a few more digits of precision, especially especially in this mode. Now, where was it? Especially in this mode, right? It does get quite precise, but the last digits are really fluctuating quite a bit, right? So I would assume some of that is due to the regulation of these very cheap uh, uh, power banks, but I don't know, you're fine with three decimal points, right? And even on, on the amps, I would actually prefer seeing just three decimals so I can easily read the milliamps. But uh, alas, none of them do that, so that is quite sad. So accuracy, technically the YZX wins, but I will give one point to both of them because they are both more than adequately precise. All right, so for this round, we're gonna take a look at the uh, low voltage tolerance of these supplies. So you could actually find yourself measuring a pretty weak or pretty weird behaving power supply or power bank or whatever and uh, you would want these to go outside of the range of USB right so they both measure up to 24 volts so that's all fine but uh, how low do they go and uh, this is actually let's actually look at it there's quite a stark difference so as you can see the Rui Dang goes out at around 3.9 and really wants about 5 to come back to life Right, so I'll slowly bring it down. Exactly, so 3.95 is where the Rui Deng cuts off. And it seems to be a software cutoff, right? Just to keep, uh, right, probably their ADC is not precise at that voltage or some shit, but it is software controlled. Whereas the YZX Studio goes down to about 2.5 volts, right? So you can see the display dimming. And it is quite dim by now. Right, you can barely, barely make out what's on the display, right? You can actually still read it, and uh, the values are actually correct. So I did check it in this uh, under voltage scenario, and it does actually still measure correctly. So that is very impressive. And also very nice, right? In some scenarios, you might actually need that. Whereas the Rui Dang, it just doesn't let you. Let me actually do a quick demo of that. Okay, so what would this low voltage tolerance actually mean? For example, we have this uh, micro USB Nokia 600 milliamp hour charger. And uh, we'll connect it up to a uh, electronic load. This is also made by Rui Dang. It's called the LD25. And uh, let's start at, let's actually start at zero, right? So zero actually means 14 milliamps, and let's analyze the voltage as we go up. All right, so 30 milliamps, 4.8, 400, 4.8, 500, 4.8, all fine, 600, and keep in mind this is a bit more than 600 because this is also using 20 milliamps 650 and it goes out right but does it actually go out right you saw that this was still displaying and so if you use the YZX where that one left off we would see that it actually drops down to 3.2 volts, right? So going back to 60, and we could very precisely, right, 6.1. And then it actually does keep the 600 milliamps. So this is very nice, right? It means that it is current regulating at 600 milliamps. Right, so 2.9, and it still keeps the 600 milliamps flowing. So basically, yeah, this is why you would want the uh, capability of going lower in voltage than 3.9.
Now we're going to have a look at the uh, refresh rates of these two power monitors and this one does actually go to the YZX Studio because this has a simple mode in which the refresh rate is ridiculous. So let's actually go to it. And as you can probably see, the refresh rate is quite ludicrous in this one. And you could, for example, use this to take a look at how nickel metal hydride cells charge. And these actually charge in pulses. So let's have a look at how that shows up on screen. All right, so you can see that it does actually pulse the battery. And this actually does vary with the state of charge. Uh, this one is actually fully charged. All right. Let's see how this would look with the uh, Rui Dang. Actually, first. All right, so it's basically completely filtered out. You cannot see that at all. And there is no mode that could actually give you that extra information, not even the uh, graph mode. All right. Okay, another category that might be important to some of you is the ability to request uh, quick charge, right? To send quick charge messages. And this one does actually allow that, if I could remember how. So I think it's on this screen, right? You can see that it lists the possible available protocols. And if you long press, you can actually make it ask for High voltage, obviously, this is a piece of shit. This doesn't have any data connection, so it can't do it. Um, so I don't know how, how useful that would be to you, but if it would be, then uh, YZX gets the point, right? Uh, this one does also support pass-through quick charging, but you would need to have one of those uh, remote thingies that actually sends the, sends the messages across. So this is not, not a really important category. But uh, anyway. Now let's talk about Bluetooth. So... Uh, you might actually want to lock the values on a phone or actually view them on a phone if this is in a very inaccessible place, right? Who knows where you're measuring your shit? No one, no one's judging. Uh, both of these support uh, changing the backs with the Bluetooth populated uh, boards. It is, however, quite expensive to do on the YZX Studio. So on the YZX Studio, you need to pay 19 bucks more and it's pretty hard to come by. I've only seen one seller on AliExpress actually sell the one with the Bluetooth, whereas with Rui Dang, it is actually just four bucks to get the Bluetooth. So it's a no-brainer. Why would you not get it? It doesn't work with iPhones, so I can't really use it, but uh, still. Uh, there's, a, there's a Windows app for this one, a Windows program, so I don't know. This one also has a program. I've, I've never looked into it because it's just not what I'm into. Okay, so now we've come to an end, right? You can see the scores aren't quite even, but I do want to help the one out because the question is, is this worth more than two of these, right? Because with two, you can actually get like efficiency readings and so on and so forth, right? So you can do a lot more with two of these than, than with one. It's pretty... There's few scenarios in which you would actually need two of them, but still that could be the case and I really don't think the price of this is justified. So 50 bucks is as much as a used fluke meter, right, if you get the 15B or the cheaper models. And this is very good, right, it does a lot of shit. Both of them remember their last saved modes and they're clever and they're very precise and so on and so forth, but I don't know. I'd say this is a bit too expensive, so I'm going to give this point to the Rui Dang. And the Rui Dang is actually surprisingly cheap, so if you were waiting on buy holding off on buying one of these, then I could definitely recommend it. So if you have one of those shitty like LCD ones, like I used to have, it's a night and day difference, right? This can do a lot more stuff, is a lot more precise, uh, right? You could get the high refresh rates, just, yeah. Just go ahead and buy one and uh, do yourself a favor. 
All right, so any questions, leave them down in the comments. Um, and purchasing links are in the description for both of these. Have a good one, guys.